So I'm just going to show you what um, what we've been doing. So this is the grade 10 curriculum. I don't know how different it's going to be for you, but it's, it's, it's about the same for every province in Canada. Maybe Quebec is a little bit different, but apart from that, it's, it's pretty much similar. So last week we did um, chapter one, system of linear equations. You remember that, right? Substitution, mm -hmm. elimination, and then we had multiple systems. We graphed them, yada, yada. Before that, we did some analytical geometry. We did circle, which has an equation of x squared plus y squared equals r squared. The distance formula between two points, just to rise over run, find the hypotenuse. That's basically the distance formula. We looked at some shapes, parallelogram, rectangle, yada, yada. Next, what we're going to be doing, we're just going to follow this track here. We're going to go to chapter three, graphs of quadratic relations. Now, we've done this in the past. So this shouldn't be anything super difficult. Um, so let's see where this takes us. Remember, quadratic just means x squared. Yeah, it literally just means x squared. Um, this is the general form of a quadratic equation. This thing right here, this is going to be our bread and butter. Now, if A is positive, okay, look at how it's denoted. If A is bigger than zero, that means A is positive. Your quadratic, we don't know what it looks like yet, but the only thing we do know is that it's going to be opening up. Okay. If A is less than zero, again, this means it's negative. Less than zero means A is negative. The graph is going to be um, opening downwards like this. Remember this? Now, there's three parts to a quadratic graph. And most questions, or if you can, if you know how to do this, you should be able to do almost any question they throw at you. Now, this thing here, the, these are your x-intercepts, right? There's going to be two of them. That's your x-intercept. This thing down here, the, the pointiest part of the graph, that's your vertex. Now, you can have a vertex at the bottom. This is called a minimum because the vertex is at the bottom. Or you can have a vertex here, which is called a maximum. And the last thing you need is the y-intercept, which is where the graph touches the y-axis so right there. That's your y-intercept. Over here, this would be your y-intercept. Right? If you know how to find these three, you should be able to do any question they throw at you. Now, in a standard form, this is, this is a quadratic in a standard form. It gives you the a value, so we know it's either going to open up or down. And it also gives you the y-intercept. Do you see that c? Mm -hmm. This is your y-intercept, in a standard form anyways. There's two more forms uh, of a quadratic. The other form is called the factored form. We're going to see how to do all of these, which is going to look like this. This form gives you the x-intercepts. And then finally, you have the vertex form, which looks something like this. This thing gives you the vertex. So once you know how to go between the, these three forms, right, you can do any quadratic question they throw at you. Sometimes you may get a mixture of quadratic and linear. Like, for example, there's a quadratic going this way. There's a linear going this way, right? What are these two points called? It has a specific name. That's where they meet. You see where this intersects the quadratic here and here? That's called the POI, okay? It's just the POI, point of intersection. Both of these. So mm -hmm. let's say you're given this, y equals x squared minus x squared plus 4. And it give you this, minus 3x plus 12 or something. We're given two equations, and we need to find the POI. Very simple. Just set them equals to each other and solve 4x, OK? Let's look at some questions. We'll start off slow, 
and we'll see where that takes us. So remember, quadratic has to be uh, circular around the vertex. Look at it. This is a very simple question. It says, which of the following is a quadratic? Is A a quadratic? No. No, right? This is linear. Very simple. C is good. What about E? Is E a quadratic? No. No, it's not. Now, what is going on with E? It's it's very pointy at the bottom. This is two things. This is either y equals negative x when x is negative. Okay, you see this line here? That's the graph mm -hmm. of y equals negative x. Or y is positive x when x is positive. This is called a piecewise function where a graph is made up of multiple things. That's one way to look at E. Another way to look at this, and this is the better way, is that function there is y is the absolute value of x. Okay, that's the graph of y equals x value. Now, what does that mean though? Y equals absolute value of x. Now, this absolute value symbol here, what does it do? It, it always spits out a positive number. For example, the absolute value of three is still a three. The absolute value of negative three, however, is positive three. It always spits out the positive number, okay? Um, so let's say the question is graph y equals to the absolute value of x. When x is negative two, what's the y value? If this is our function here. Positive two. Negative one becomes positive one. Zero becomes a zero, it doesn't change. One becomes a one, two becomes a two. Now, if you graph this out, look at this, negative one, negative two. Negative two, we have positive two, so over here. Negative one, we have uh, positive one, so over here, zero, zero. And then at one, again, we're back up to positive one, and at two, we're back up to positive two. Like that, you see, it's very pointy at the bottom. Now, absolute value is, uh, very, very similar to a quadratic. They share a lot of characteristics. We're not gonna talk too much about the absolute value function in this chapter, but as you can see, it has a vertex, right? Just like a quadratic, and the vertex of this is way easier to find compared to the vertex of this, because this is basically just a combination of linear. Anyways, let's move on. What's going on with B? Is that a quadratic? What is B? B is not a quadratic, okay? Because it's, it could be, I guess, if you sp split it up. But for our purposes, we're, we're not really looking at functions that split up. B is not a quadratic. B is going to be a trig function. B, you can either represent this with cosine of x, or you can represent this with sine of x, okay? Now, why is B not a quadratic? Look at a quadratic, like over here. It's very curvy, right? It's very curvy, but it's not like a semicircle curvy, right? Like if you look at this, see this? That's not a perfect semicircle, which looks something like this. If you were to find something like this, the distance here is going to be way less than the distance here. As you can see, compare these two lines. The line at the bottom is bigger than this line, okay? But whereas mm -hmm. we know for a circle, all the lines should be exactly the same because that's basically just the radius. B is not a quadratic. That's a trig function. Quadratic is strictly you're going to get something going up or something going down like D. D for sure is. What about F? Is F a quadratic? No. No, it's not. We don't even know what F is. That's not a function. It is a function, but there's no predetermined, um, like we had for sine, cosine, we had this, we had absolute value of this. There's nothing like that for F. F is going to be um, something that's made out of four different linear equations. There's an equation from here to here. There's an equation for this guy from there to there. There's an equation for this guy there to there. And then finally, there's an equation from that guy going to positive infinity on the x-axis. This is called a piecewise 
piecewise function. We'll see more of this in grade 11. Now the next thing is called the degree. Now what is a degree? Degree is the highest power in an equation. Okay, it's the highest power. X plus three, Y equals two. What's the power of X? One. One, that means this is linear. Y equals X squared plus three. The degree here is two, this is a quadratic. Y equals X three, this is gonna be a cubic function. And just like that, very simple. Okay, yeah, one and two is simple. We're going to ignore this. The degree here is one. The degree here is two. It's going to be the highest power, by the way. Look at this. X squared plus 3X cubed minus 4X4. What's the degree of this? It's four. It's four, exactly. Look at the third question there, this one. What is the degree? Two. Yeah, good. It's two. Um, and the degree here is three. It's just that easy. Three says, um, state the y-intercept. Very simple. Y-intercept is the c value or the constant in standard form. The y-intercept of the first question is negative two. The y-intercept of the second question is plus four. What's the y-intercept of the third one? Zero. Yeah, perfect. It's zero because when you open this, you get x squared plus 4x. There is no constant here. This goes through the origin. The y-intercept is zero, which also means the x-intercept is zero. And then you have the fourth one. The y-intercept here is negative one. Very simple. Now, if they give you a graph or they give you an equation, it's pretty simple to see what it is. But sometimes what they do is they will give you a table of values, and they're going to ask you... Um, to determine what type of an equation this is. So what do you do in this case? You need to find something called the first difference. And we don't really care about the x here. So we have 1, negative 1, 7, and negative 11. We're going to find something called the first difference. How do you find that? You're going to take this number up here, OK? And then you're going to subtract this number here. So 1 and negative 1 gives us positive 2, yeah? Mm -hmm. What's negative 1 minus 7? Negative 8. Yes, yeah, so and these two give us negative 8. And then the last one, 7 minus 11 would give us um, 18, right? That's going to be our first difference. And then... We're gonna, we got to go one level deeper. Second difference. What's 2 minus negative 8? It's negative 6. Uh, so this is tricky, right? Because it's 2 minus negative 8. 2 well, minus so 10. 10, right? The next one, uh, negative 8 minus... 18 becomes minus 26. So there you go. Now, if the first differences are equal, here they are not equal, right? First differences, we got three distinct numbers. If the first differences are equal, then this becomes a linear. The table of values there, it's a linear function. It's going to be a straight line. If the second differences are the same, then it's x squared. It's a quadratic. As you can imagine, if the third differences are the same, it's going to be x cubed. If the four differences are the same, it's going to be um, x to the power of 4. Okay, that's just pretty much it. Let's do one more of these. Um, we can do, I guess, e. We just have to find the first difference. And if they're the same, we can stop there because we know it's uh, linear. And then if it's not, we got to go one level deeper. Again, we don't really care about the x. So we have y's. So we have... Um, Negative 2, negative 1, 6, and 25. First difference. So negative 2 minus 1 becomes negative 2 plus 1 becomes negative 1. Negative 1 minus 6, well, that's easy. That's negative 7. And 6 minus 25 is negative 19, yeah? 
So mm -hmm. first differences are not the same. So this is not a linear. So we got to go a level deeper. And we're only going to go to the second level because this we're doing quadratics. But in grade 11 or not 11, 12, you're going to see cubic functions. And now you got to go one more level deeper. What's negative 1 minus 7? Six. What about here? It's an 11, okay? So even this one is neither. Cool? This is neither linear nor a quadratic. And then the F, I think, is going to be quadratic. One, two, four, eight, 16. One minus two, negative one. Two minus four, negative two, negative four, negative eight. First differences are not the same. So that means this is not a linear function. Go a level deeper. Negative one minus two becomes negative one plus two, yeah? What's negative one plus two? It's one. It's one, and then you have negative two plus four, Two. negative 4 plus 8, this becomes um, plus 4. So actually, none of these are quadratic. 1, 2, 4, not the same, not quadratic. These are not the same. It's not linear either. But if the numbers were the same, yeah, then you would get a quadratic. Like, for example, if this was maybe um, 1. Well, let me show you an example of what a quadratic looks like. 4, um, 9, 16. One minus four, negative three. Four minus five, negative nine. Nine minus 16, negative seven, yeah? Negative three minus five becomes negative three plus five, positive two. Negative five minus seven becomes positive two as well. So there you go. Notice how the second differences are the same, right? It doesn't have to be 2. It can be like 3, 3, or 4, 4. It doesn't matter. As long as the differences are the same, this is a quadratic. That means the degree is going to be 2. Cool? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So this, this equation here is very simple. It's the base quadratic one, y equals x squared. Finding this is tricky as well. If they give you a table of values, um, and if they ask you to find the equation, that would be a very difficult question. Depending on what they give you, if they give you the x and the y-intercepts, maybe you can work your way backwards. Um, question six is also very simple. It says it opens up or down. We're just looking at the a value, right? A is going to open up. B is negative one. A value is going to open down. What's the a value of C? Gonna open down. It's gonna open down, and the a value is negative two. For d, the a value is negative nine. It's gonna open down. Seven could be a tricky question. It says, why can't a be? Why must a be non-zero? Like it says, a can't be zero. What happens if a is zero? If a is 0, then this entire thing disappears, right? Mm -hmm. This is a x squared. So any x squared times anything is going to be 0, or x squared times 0 is going to be 0. So this disappears. And look at this. This becomes a linear equation. So that's why a must be non-zero. It can't be 0 in a quadratic equation. Cool? Mm -hmm. Let's look at this. It's asking us for the greatest height. Does this open up or down? This is our down. equation. Down, right? So as you can imagine, it is going to have a maximum because it's opening downwards. Yeah? It's mm -hmm. not going to look like this. It's going to look more like this. But we can prove this. It's going to go through the origin there. 
So let's look at this equation. Y equals negative X squared plus five X. Remember to graph something, you need three things, X intercept, Y intercept, and the vertex. So how do we graph this? Let's first find the X intercept. Now remember X intercept for any function, doesn't matter what it is. To find the X intercept, set Y as zero. And to find the Y intercept, set x as 0, and then solve. Let's find the x-intercept first. y becomes 0, then you have negative x squared plus 5x. How do you solve this for x? You don't need to factor it, OK? I'm going to pull an x out on the right-hand side. What am I left with? Negative x plus 5. Negative x plus 5. Now, this is going to be a critical thing. When you factor a quadratic, OK, if you factor a quadratic, so you're going to get something like this, something times something. Like here, there's an invisible bracket here. The other side of this equation must be 0, OK? Otherwise, it's not going to help you. So in this case, yes, it is a 0. So what that means is if the other side is 0, that means either the first bracket is going to be 0, and then you solve for x there, or the other bracket is going to be 0, you solve for x there. Why are we solving twice? It's because it's x squared. It can have up to two x-intercepts. X-intercepts are the solutions once you solve for x. Look at this. So this means either x is going to be 0, okay? The first bracket is going to be 0, or negative x plus 5 is going to be 0. How do we solve this for x? You subtract 5. Yeah, you subtract 5. And then you divide by negative 1 or multiply by negative 1. You're going to get x equals 5. So we have the x-intercept. Next, to find the y-intercept, you just set x is 0. So y-intercept, very simple. Just set the x's as 0. You get negative 0 squared plus 5 times 0. That's going to be a 0, OK? Mm -hmm. So we have our x-intercept. Our x-intercept was 0 and 5 and our y-intercept was 0. The last piece of the puzzle is the vertex. How do you find the vertex? The vertex has this form, h, comma, k. h is the x value of the vertex, k is the y value of the vertex. Now, h, the x value of the vertex, will always be, okay, will always be in the middle of the two x-intercepts. It's the midpoint of the two x-intercepts. So this is the formula here. x1 is the first intercept. x2 is the second intercept divided by 2. OK? Mm -hmm. If we use this here, you're going to get 0 as the first intercept. X and, again, these are both x-intercepts. Plus 5 divided by 2. Your h value is going to be 2.5. To find the k, you simply need to plug h back in. Plug h back into the equation, OK? So all you do is you take this 2.5 and you plug it back in. Uh, what are, well, this question is asking us for the height. So we're probably not expecting a negative answer. So negative 2.5 squared plus 5 times 2.5, and that gives us 6.25. There you go. That's going to be the y value of the vertex, and that's also the answer to this question. Now, if you go and graph this, uh, so h comma k was 2.5 is the x value, 6.25 is the y value. Now we have everything we need to graph this. Again, you don't have to be precise with this. Um, this is 0, x-intercept, y-intercept, 5 is here. And our vertex is going to be 2.5 and 6.25 right there. 
And there you go. So the y value there is um, 6.25, the x value there is 2.5. So to answer this question, what's the greatest height? They're asking for the maximum or the y value of the vertex. It's going to be 6.25, what's the unit here? Meters. Okay, so that's the answer to this question. Um, what does the 2.5 represent in the context of this question? The answer is here. So the question could be like, what does 2.5 imply? What does the age imply? What do you think? The answer is right here. The greatest height of 6.25 meters is achieved when the ball travels, or whatever this is, it is a ball, when the ball travels 2.5 meters horizontally, okay? Mm -hmm. So the distance from here to here is 2.5. So the greatest height is achieved when the ball has traveled 2.5 meters in the X direction or in the horizontal direction. Um, if you want the greatest height, the angle is, again, this is physics, but the angle here, right? The angle here should be 45. And that'll give you the greatest height. And that's because the formula for the greatest height uses sine 2x, where x is the angle. And that means you need to maximize this. And this is maximized at, um, when x is 45 because sine 90 is gonna be one and that's the maximum value of sine, okay? So in everyday life, if you're maximizing the height, 45 degrees. Let's look at this. Sketch the graph of this relation. Determine the equation and yada, yada. Alrighty, so again, we know how to sketch this. To sketch this, we're gonna first find the x-intercept, then we're gonna find the y-intercept, then we're gonna find the vertex. How do you find the x-intercept of a quadratic? To find the x-intercept set, y is zero. Pull an x out, you're left with x minus six. What are our two x-intercepts? The first one is zero. What about the second one? You gotta set this equal to zero. How do you solve this for x? x minus 6 equals 0? Six. Just 6, right? So there, those are our two x intercepts. Super simple to find because this is not in the standard form. Well, it is in the standard form, but it doesn't have a y intercept, so it's easier. If it did have a y intercept, then we're going to have to man it if possible. Remember, if the x intercept is 0, y intercept is going to be not all the time, but in this case, it will be. So this is the x intercept. Now the y-intercept, you gotta just set x as zero. So y is gonna be equal to zero squared minus six times zero. That's also zero. Then you need to find the vertex. The formula for a vertex, h is gonna be x1 plus x2 divided by two. x1 is zero, x2 is six divided by two. You get a three, right? h is simply the midpoint of the x-intercepts. How do you find k, which is the y-value of the vertex? Plug it in. Yeah, you just plug the h back into the equation. So it becomes 3 squared minus 6 times 3. This is going to be 9 minus 18. It's going to be negative 9. Now we have everything we need. So our x-intercept is 0 and 6. So 0 here, 6 somewhere here. Don't really care. 
uh, y intercept is also zero, so right there. And our vertex is at three and negative nine. So three may be somewhere here, negative nine is somewhere here. Opening up or down? It's gonna be opening up. And again, there's no way this opens down because we need to connect these three dots. So there you go, that's our equation of the quadratic. Let's look at the questions. Again, we have everything. The vertex is h comma k, so three comma negative nine. The y-intercept is zero. The x-intercept is zero and six. The only question we haven't answered it is the first one, determine the axis of symmetry. Now, axis of symmetry is an invisible line where the graph is cut into half. Very simple if you have the vertex. The axis of symmetry is the line, is this line right here, that goes through the vertex. It's a straight line, perfectly vertical. What's the equation of this line? It goes through the x value of 3. That's a big hint. A vertical line, okay, a vertical line has an equation of x. It's not going to be y equals mx plus b. It's going to be simply x equals 3. Similarly, a horizontal line doesn't have, by horizontal, I mean like, like this. There's no slope here. The equation for that is going to be y equals to whatever that number is. So if that's 3, it's going to be y equals 3. Vertical line has this form in terms of x. Horizontal line has y equals, okay? That's the difference. Anyways, that's it for this question. The equation of the axis of symmetry is this, x equals 3, the line that cuts the graph into half. This is not the perfect drawing, but what that means is this part is exactly the same as this part. It's symmetrical perfectly, okay? That's it for that. How do they do it? They used a table of values, which is an okay approach, but then sometimes if the numbers are big, then you're gonna have trouble finding the vertex. All right, let's look at this one. X is the horizontal position of the bird and Y is the depth of the water, underwater. Is this opening up or down? Down. Yeah. It's opening down, are you sure? Look at the question, it's opening up. Oh, it's opening up. It's opening up, right? So our graph is probably, I mean, we know the X and the Y intercept is gonna be zero. Just by looking at the graph, it's gonna be something like this. This is gonna be our vertex. This distance here, the y value, whatever this is, that's going to be uh, our depth. Okay, That's going to be the answer to this question. We're simply looking for what's the y value down there. And at that point, right, at that point, the x value here, this is going to be the horizontal distance traveled by the bird. This is the horizontal distance traveled. This is going to be the distance the bird went underwater, okay? The diving depth or whatever is gonna be the Y value here. Exact same question as last time, nothing difficult. Look at how quick this is. You can imagine one of the X values, one of the X intercepts is gonna be zero because we're gonna pull out an X. If we pull out an X out of this, what are we left with? Zero point five x minus three. Yeah, zero point five x minus three. Now the first x intercept is zero. What's the second x intercept? We just need to solve this for x. How do you solve this linear equation for x? You add three and divide by zero point five. What's three over zero point five? Six. 
yeah. So those are our x-intercepts. Now to find the y-intercept, just plug x as 0. It's going to be 0 in this case. How do you find h? Remember, h is the x value of the vertex. You add the two x-intercepts and then divide by 2. Exactly. It's going to be 3. To find the k, and this is going to be the answer, you don't even need a graph. You just plug 3 back into the equation. So plus this, minus 3 times this. It's going to be 4.5 minus 9. It's going to be 4.5 negative. The negative 4.5 means it's underwater, right? Because our this is our surface. The x-axis is the surface. 4.5 means it's down here somewhere. And that's it. We don't really need a graph, but if you wanted to, it would look something like this. This is 0 here. This is 6 on the x-intercept. Y-intercept is also 0. And this guy here, that's our vertex. The x-point is 3. And the y point is negative 4.5. So the answer to this question is going to be 4.5 meters. I'm going to ask you a question. What's the axis of symmetry here? What's the equation of the axis of symmetry? This line. x equals negative 4.5. No, 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 not the y value, the x value, because x equals, right? Oh, x equals 3. Yeah, exactly. x equals negative 4.5 would be this line here that goes through the x value of I'm going to show you something called um, the function notation. Sometimes instead of writing y equals 3x plus 4, we can write f of x equals 3x plus 4. f of x means the exact same thing as y. Okay, f of x is y, but this is called the function notation. And sometimes this is preferred. For example, f of 1 becomes, you simply plug the x value as 1. 3 times 1 plus 4, this becomes 3 plus 4 is 7. What does this imply? This implies that when the x value is 1, the y value is 7. Okay? Just replace y with f of x. Or here we have an h. You can replace h with h of t. You can do that. What does that mean, though? In Look at part d. To find part d, all you have to do is plug t value as 61.25 on a calculator. h of t or h of 61.25, that'll be the answer to that question. Anyways, this question is going to be a little bit tricky because there is a y-intercept now. In the last, all the questions we've done so far, there was no y-intercept. This one does have. So to do part A, determine the greatest height reached by the rocket. We need to find the vertex. Greatest height means the vertex. Um, all right, so let's find the x-intercept. How do you find the x-intercept? You set y is 0, OK? or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. On this case, in this case, we have h as our y, so y is going to be 0. Then we have negative 5t squared plus 35t plus 5. Now, this one's going to give us some trouble. Whenever you're trying to find the x-intercept, if you can factor something from the very beginning, go ahead and do that. Can we pull anything out in this case?
Look at these three guys. Do they have anything in common that we can pull out? You can pull out negative five. All right, let's pull out negative five. What are you left with if we pull out negative five? Um, you get t squared plus, I mean, minus seven. Was that it? Minus one. Minus seven t minus one. Okay, like that. Um, now this is going to give us some trouble, isn't it? Because I'm looking at this guy, right? And... Basically, we need to man this. But the issue with manning this is this. This thing here, our two numbers needs to add up to the middle guy. And our um, numbers need to multiply to the first guy. Now, there's no combination of where this is possible, okay? Because if it adds up to negative 7, there's no way it multiplies to negative 1, at least not whole numbers. So what do we do in this case? I'm just going to see what they did because they, <laughs> look, they cheated. They used a graphing calculator. You can't do that. I guess you can. Um, but this is not manable. So that's the main point. This is this is not manable. So what do you do here, though? If it's not manable, what do you do? Things become very complicated. If, well, not very complicated, but it becomes um, somewhat. You need to use, and only when it's not manable, and it's going to be not manable quite a number of times, you need to use the quadratic formula. Or you can use a graphing calculator, but you're never going to be allowed to use one on a test. So what does a quadratic formula look like? It looks very intimidating. This is what it looks like. x, your two x-intercepts, are going to be equals to negative b plus minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Looks very weird. What does any of that mean. You see this? This is our, compare this with this, ax squared plus bx plus c. Compare this equation here with this equation. What's your a value? What's your b value? What's your c value? a is 1. Yeah. b is negative 7. Yes, and C is and negative, C one. Is negative 1. Right? Now, before you use the quadratic formula, we're going to use some logic to see if this thing even has x-intercepts. Because we know this is opening up. It could be something like this, right? Or if it's opening down, it could be something like these. Both of these don't have x-intercepts. So there's no point even using the quadratic formula. You're going to get something weird like a negative inside a squared root. So does this actually have any x-intercepts? We know this is opening up. Yeah. And what's the y-intercept? What's the y-intercept here? Negative 1. Negative 1. So we know our graph is opening up, and it must pass through negative 1. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Look at this. So we don't know where the vertex is or the x-intercepts. We don't know any of that. But we do know it needs to pass through negative 1. And the only way it can pass through negative 1 is if it passes the x-axis. So you see that? It does have x-intercepts. We just don't know what it is just yet. Next, we're going to plug it into this formula. Negative b becomes negative negative 7 becomes positive 7 plus minus b squared, well, b is 7, so b squared will be negative 7 squared, positive 49, minus 4 times 1 times negative 1, all over 2 times 1, 2a. So this becomes 7 plus minus 49 plus 4, so that's just 53, 
divided by 2. Now, what does that mean? So either you do 7 plus root 53 over 2. That will give you the first, first x-intercept. And on a calculator, you do 7 minus root 53 over 2. That will give you the second. So 7 plus root 53 divided by 2. Our first x-intercept is 7.14. And then 7 minus root 53 divided by 2. Our other x-intercept down here is negative 0 0.14. There you go. That's how you find the x-intercept of a quadratic when it's not manable. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, we can find the h value. Remember, h is just the midpoint between the two x-intercepts like this. So this becomes 7 over 2 becomes 3.5. To find the k value, just plug 3.5 back into the equation. So negative 5 times 3.5 squared plus 35 times 3.5 plus 5 gives me um, 66.25. Actually, this graph is opening up, so I've drawn it upside down. Nothing changes, though, because if it does open up, um, so it'll look something like this. Maybe not like that. So it's opening up. And where did I get negative 1 from? Oh, I got it from here. OK, now the graph, actually, when you graph it, we need to graph the actual equation, not this factored form. So this is just for logic, OK? This thing that we did before was for logic. But this question, you need to graph this guy. Nothing changes. Look at this. The x-intercepts are still going to be the same, OK? But now the y-intercept is plus 5 instead of negative 1. And our vertex, our maximum value, is going to be somewhere up there. So this value up here is 66.25. So there you go. Now we can answer every question here. Determine the greatest height reached by the rocket. What's the answer? 66.25. Right, easy. How long is a rocket in flight? How long is a rocket in flight? Well, the, the x axis here is our time. Okay. So the rocket was fired from here, from a height of 5 meters, from a cliff. Actually, we don't care about the negative, because time cannot be negative. So we don't really care about this quadrant. So a rocket was thrown from a height of 5 meters. It reaches a height of 66.25 meters. And it comes crashing down into the ground. And this is not going underwater. OK? Mm -hmm. so, and that value there is 7.14. And remember, x-axis is time. So when the question says, how long is the rocket in flight, it's asking us, what's the time that it crashes down? OK? Mm -hmm. The answer is 7.14 seconds. C, determine the height of the building. Height of the building is the initial launch height. What is it? From what height uh -huh. was it? Five meters, easy. The last part was the height of the rocket. When is the height of the rocket? 61.25 meters. So actually, we're not finding h of 61.25. We need to find the time. Again, this is going to be another tricky question. You need to find the time when h is 61.25, like this. OK, like that. You need to find, you need to solve this equation for t, OK? Mm -hmm. And again, this is not going to be something that's manable. So you need to use the quadratic formula if you're doing it by hand. And I'm sure they would have done it by a calculator. Yeah, I don't know why this question's here, to be honest. I guess they want you to know that um, you can use a graphing calculator to do these calculations. And it's way quicker, right? Graphing calculator is basically like a cheat code. But your teachers would expect you to 
be able to do this by hand. Um, it's not the end of the world. You just have to use the, you just have to be able to use the quadratic formula. Let's go back here. For each, again, we don't have to really do this, but it's very simple here. We'll just do one of these. For each graph, state the y-intercept. Oh, the y-intercept is zero. Plus the x-intercept here. Negative four. Yeah, so the x-intercept, one of them is negative four. What's the other x-intercept? See, this is our x-intercept. This is also our x-intercept. It's going to be zero. Okay. Where does the graph meet the x-axis? That's all it, that is. The vertex. The vertex is negative 2, comma 4, h, comma k. What's the equation of the axis of symmetry? So it's just asking you for the equation of this dotted red line. It goes through the x value of negative 2, yeah? That's oh, a vertical line. Negative 2. Yeah, that's it. x equals negative 2. Easy as that. The equation here. What's the equation of this dotted line? This one. The red dotted line. x equals 0. Yeah. And this one, x equals 2, right? Pretty simple. Just whatever mm -hmm. the x value goes through. This one we haven't done, but if you calculate the second differences, if they are positive, then the graph is opening up, okay? Like this one, for B, if you were to find the second differences, the, they will be positive because the graph is opening up. Whereas for A, if you find the second differences, they will be negative. That means the graph is opening down. Um, what else can we do here? Look at this. So each pair point is located on the opposite side of the same parabola. Determine the equation of the axis of symmetry. What does that mean? So we have 3, 2 here, maybe. And we have 9, 2 um, here, OK? The y value is 2. The x value is 3. The x value is 9. Now remember, the axis of symmetry is always going to cut things in half. What's the x value here? Six. Six. That's just uh, they're just asking you for h. What's h equals to? You take your two again. These this one we did it with x intercepts, but you can use any points on the graph that are symmetrical. X intercepts are symmetrical. Okay, but in a, in a parabola, there's going to be an infinite number of symmetrical points. So usually we use this and this, right? The x-intercepts. But you can use any of these. You can use this and this. That'll also give you the midpoint, because that's just the midpoint. Mm -hmm. Same thing here. It's just the midpoint. For all these questions, just add x1 and x2, divide by 2, and you're done. Okay, let's look at this. What are the zeros? What do they mean by the zeros? They're just asking you for the x-intercepts, okay? How do you find the x-intercept? How do you find the x-intercept is the question. You said y is zero. Yeah, you said y is 0, and then you factor it if, if you need. So here, it's going to be 0 equals 20t minus 5t squared. What's next? 
You can pull out five T. Yeah, what are you left with? Four minus five T. Four minus T, okay? Because you already pulled out the five. Mm -hmm. So what are our, our x-intercepts? It's either going to be um, 5t is equals to 0, yeah? Or it's going to be 4 minus t is equals to 0. If 5t is 0, what's t? How do you solve for t? Well, divide both sides by 5. 0 over 5 is 0. How do you solve this for t? Subtract 4, multiply by negative 1. t is 4. There we go. Our h is going to be 4 plus 0 over 2, right? The midpoint, 2. Mm -hmm. To find the k, plug 2 back into the equation. It's going to be 20 times 2 minus 5 times 2 squared. 40 minus 5 times 4, 20. k is 20. And since there's no intercept here, we know the y-intercept is 0. Look at how easy this is. 0, 4, 0, 4. It's opening down because the a value is negative 5. And our y-intercept is 0. And our vertex is at 2 and 20. 2 and 20. So right there. So boom. That's the graph. And what are the zeros? 0 and 4. When does the football hit the ground? It's going to hit the ground after 4 seconds. Coordinates of the vertex is 220. Graph right here. What's the maximum height? It's 20 meters. After how many seconds? Well, four seconds, or two seconds. Two seconds, it's going to be at its maximum height. And that's it. That's the answer to these questions, OK? Mm -hmm. Very simple. And I guess that's it for us today. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye.